Welcome back folks, uh, thanks for joining me again. This one is a little bit overdue because I did promise to talk about the radioactivity in a little bit more basic detail. Let's have a look. Just to recap, here we have an atom and in the middle is the nucleus and in the nucleus are protons. They have a positive charge and neutrons zero charge. Outside and orbiting the nucleus are electrons and they have a negative charge. The atomic mass or mass number is defined as the total of all the protons and neutrons added together and the atomic number by the number of protons which then determines which element it is in the periodic table of elements. If some nuclei have the same number of protons but a varying number of neutrons then those are isotopes of that one element. Some isotopes are unstable and to restore stability their nuclei emit radiation so they are radioactive. I thank you. In one of the previous videos we talked about irradiation and I'm going to link that up here. Today we're going to talk about the four key types of radioactivity and the first one is an alpha particle. Now an alpha particle my little model here. An alpha particle has got two protons and two neutrons. And if you remember from our periodic table of the elements, an element is defined by the number of protons. Helium has got two protons, so this, an alpha particle, is in fact a helium nucleus without any electrons whizzing round. The relative charge is plus two, the atomic mass four as we discussed. Now this can only travel a couple of inches, so 50 millimeters, 50 to 70 millimeters in air. And that's because it's quite big and it bumps into air molecules and it slows right down. However, because it has got a double positive charge, if you get that inside you, and that would be a little bit, a little bit of dust from a radioactive, an alpha emitting element or isotope. If you've got that inside you, it would damage your organs quite severely. It can be stopped by skin. So when it's outside the body, your skin would pretty much stop it or a bit of paper would stop it. So the second radioactive particle is beta. Now I'm going to go and get an equivalent of a beta particle to give some idea of the relative size. It's a poppy seed. Let me see if I can hold that up. I'll stick it on my finger. Ooh. If I leave the little poppy seed representing a single electron, okay, so that's what a beta particle is, an electron, this would have to be the size, remember it's really... <laughs> can't get that down when it gets in view. But that, kind of just over a metre in diameter, is the size, relative size, of a proton to an electron. Anyway, back to the matter. A beta particle is an electron, we remember an electron has a minus one charge. It's roughly two thousandths, or to be precise, one thousand eight hundred and thirty seventh of the size of a proton. And this can travel a lot further. It can travel, it could travel up to 50 feet uh, and it could be stopped by wood or aluminium. It doesn't have to be too thick. So it's not highly penetrating, but more so than an alpha particle. Its ionizing power is low, it's very small, and it has a minus one charge. We then move on to gamma radiation. Now gamma radiation is not a particle, it's an electromagnetic wave. It moves at the speed of light, uh, it's very similar to x-rays, it has no charge because it is not a particle and it has no mass and it can travel quite a long way, uh, hundreds of meters, say three, four, five hundred meters in air. Its ionizing power is very low, 
but it is deeply penetrating and it can only really be stopped by lead or some thick material. Well, the last one we're going to talk about is an interesting one, particularly in respect of nuclear power stations, and that is neutrons. We haven't done the video on fission yet, but that is coming up. One of the byproducts of fission, nuclear fission, and the very item that makes fission work is neutrons, stray neutrons that come out when fission is taking place and enables regeneration of more neutrons. Now these are unbelievably ionizing and yet as a neutron they don't have any charge but because when it impacts other materials it can make them radioactive. I didn't really talk about that in sufficient detail on the irradiation and contamination video but my good friend Jim Stewart pointed that out and I've added that in the disclaimer at the beginning. Atomic mass is roughly one. It can travel a thousand meters or so. You would need deep water, as in a nuclear reactor, like a pressurized water reactor like size will be, thick concrete or metal to contain the neutrons that are spilling out. And it's one of the things that, that make a nuclear power station become contaminated with the irradiation. And graphite is used as a moderator. And the idea of that is to slow fast moving neutrons down sufficiently so that fission can take place and that was used in the old Bradwell station, one of the Magnox series and the current fleet of AGRs. However these pesky neutrons change some of the non-radioactive graphite into radioactive material. It's quite complicated we're going to keep going on with these radioactive talks because there's so much more to say. Thank you very much for listening. Please do click on the blob over here, I think, and click on the other links. And please subscribe and click the little bell icon if you'd like to know when our next video is going to be launched. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Do you believe it? There's guy doing aerobatics outside. How rude. <laughs> Are they going to go away?